Hey, what's up everybody? Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this rolling cart. It's just a utility table, an outfeed table for my table saw, an assembly table, a glue up table, uh, a spot to store stuff. It's just a simple table that I built. And one nice thing about this table is that it fits in this hole right under my bench. So when I'm not using it, it gets stored out of the way and I have all this extra space. So let me show you how I did it. So I wanted to get started here measuring to see how much space I actually have. That's 43 inches to the inside of this stud. Now I wanted to make this just a little bit wider than that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this stud from the inside of this frame to the outside of this frame. That'll give me about three extra inches. So the depth of my table, my existing workbench here from the wall is 30 inches. So I wanna build the table that's gonna slide in under here to also be 30 inches. So it's gonna come out flush right with the end of this table. Might get in the way a little bit sometimes, but I can always move it out of the way if it is in my way. There's one tricky part, and that is down at the bottom, the sill that they poured with the concrete foundations actually sticks into the room about two inches that will prevent a table from uh, rolling all the way back flush against the wall. So to solve this, I'm just gonna recess the wheels on the back of the table by about two and a half inches so that they will allow the back end of the table to slide in over the top of that. You'll see what I mean when I get to that part. So in contemplating how to build this, I realized I had a bunch of scrap lumber laying around my shop. I've got some old two by fours, that's gonna what I'm gonna use for the frame. I've got some old MDF that I cut down off of full sheets that are just almost this exact size. They're a little bit too big, so I'll just cut off a little bit and they'll, they'll fit perfectly. And most importantly, I have some caster wheels. They're left over from a project I did years ago. They're locking, uh, they've got good ball bearings, and so they'll, they'll roll real nice and easily, they'll spin. Um, and they, they roll real free and they've got four holes for screws. I don't know what the weight limit is, probably a million pounds. So that's my plan. I'm gonna build this entirely out of scraps I have laying around my shop. And um, well, I guess you know what I'm doing, so let's get to it. I removed these two screws, figuring then I could use my sledgehammer to knock it off the framing nails from the front, but I forgot that there was a screw also going into the top through the top of the workbench. And I split it. Looks like I'm building a new leg too. All right, so on the right is the leg I destroyed and on the left is the scrap that I'm gonna to use to replace it. All right, so there you go. Got a new leg that's uh, slightly less destroyed. So the leg was on this side and I wanna move it to this side, but I don't wanna put it right at this corner. I think I'm gonna slide it back just a couple inches. Am I gonna be exact? No. Does it matter? Not really. Do I care if my table is level? Yeah, I do. That's pretty good for that. What's the table itself doing? Perfect. Now that the leg was finished up, it was time to cut my new tabletop. After a quick test fit, we gathered up all the lumber we needed, measured it carefully, and cut it to the correct lengths for the upper frame of the table. After some excitement with the nail gun, we made sure that the frame was going to fit the tabletop then cut a bunch of pocket holes in the frame that we're gonna to use to attach the tabletop to it. This way you won't see any screws coming through the top of the table. Up next, we carefully measured and cut out the legs, being sure to account for the height of the wheels, and then also cut out and assembled the lower frame. We got that nailed on to the legs and this is starting to look a little bit like a box. So now it's time for the wheels. Now the base of the wheels are wider than a two x four. So I had to add an extra little piece of blocking inside the bottom part of the frame. 
Also remember that the wheels in the back need to be pulled towards the front of the frame by about two and a half inches to make sure that there's room for the back of the table to slide over the lip of concrete. Okay, it fits. Slides in and out just perfectly. So it's time to put the top on and we're gonna do that with pocket screws. And then it was time for the moment of truth, where I realized I messed up. I never really did figure out what I measured wrong, but somewhere along the way, I got this thing to be about a half inch too tall. I thought about various ways to try and fix this so it would slide under the bench, but then I remembered another problem. I wanted to use this as an outfeed table for my table saw, but as you can see, it's a little too tall, about a quarter inch. So I think what I'm gonna do is take the top back off since it's just on with pocket screws. And then uh, either use my circular saw or get my son to come and help me run the top of this through the table saw. And I'll just shave off about a quarter or a half inch off the top here. Uh, and then it'll be the right height for coming off my table saw. I'll probably go for the half inch I want to make sure that it is low enough. Things can drop off the back of the table saw a little bit, so having it a little low is fine, but having it a little high is not going to work. So I'll probably take the whole half inch off. I will have to watch out for nails and other things from when I framed this box. But you get to see uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. I made the mistake. Now I'm going to fix it. So the top had to come back off, and then I had to check very carefully for nails that were going to be in the cut path of the saw. You can see there's a nail head right there. So I'm gonna make sure I cut above that. And there's a nail head there. I'm good above that. All right, YouTube, I screwed up. And the way I'm gonna fix it is really dumb and dangerous and stupid. That's kind of what I was thinking. That's what he was thinking. Don't try this at home. The table saw did a good job with most of this, but I had a little bit of extra trimming to do by hand. And after taking just a little bit off the top, it fits fine. I had to redrill all the pocket holes and then reattach the top. Okay, so I could stop here. It is a perfectly usable table, and I, I'm real happy with how it's turned out so far after a few tweaks. It's a tight fit, but that lets me maximize the space I have. It does slide in real nice. So I think next I'm gonna put uh, one more piece of MDF along the bottom there, and just to have one more extra shelf for throwing stuff while I'm working when I've pulled the table out. And I may make more use of this later. It's, uh, it's a flexible design that's gonna let me, you know, it's just a box. Uh, in the future, I could add drawers, I could add cabinetry down there, um, I could do whatever I want with it. But for now, just to be able to have an extra work table and an outfeed table for my table saw, that's what I really wanted. So speaking of outfeed tables, let's try that. Uh, I'm going to cut the next little shelf that's going to go down there, and I'm going to do that on the table saw, and we'll use this as my new outfeed support. And it works just great as an outfeed table. The bottom shelf fit great the first try, and after just a couple of pocket screws, that was attached and uh, the project was finished. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I can always use more horizontal space in the shop and I'm really looking forward to using this on some bigger projects. So hey, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down there and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But no pressure. And thanks for watching.